Now that the fender's been primed and sat overnight, we're gonna get it ready for paint. We're just gonna put some guide coat on it and block it out. I used a spray guide coat for the first time, and then I like to use the powder after that. And I used a stick it on here, 320 stick it. You wanna block really with two hands if possible, because if, if you don't, the block can rock. If you're doing one, you really wanna keep it level, of putting the pressure equal on both sides of the block. This is why you put guide coat on. You can see right here, um, some areas that I'm not sanded through yet, but yet around, all around it it's been sanded. And that means there's a little low spot here. It's not bad enough that the primer won't take care of it, but it just lets you know that you need to keep sanding in those areas till it's consistent where you don't see any more of the areas that you can still see the guide coat underneath. You can see actually where I've been sanding with the straight block and I left uh, some edges in there. So you need to use a round block of some sort and get and work that area out with a round block. I'll just use some stick it on my round block. When I'm doing this, I'm always rolling my wrists. If you just went straight, you would leave an, an edge just like if it was a straight block. So you always want to be rolling it. You can see that there's a little low spot in here yet, so I got to keep working that. And you can see that the uh, stick marks, what I would call it, where it's got a straight, a sharp edge in it from the straight sanding block, that's going away. I have just a little bit right here yet. Get my other flat block and go over just toward the edges. Okay, the fender feels pretty straight now. If you look close, there's no guide coat through it. It's all pretty uniform. So before I tape it off, the edges and go to the next. I like to just finish this whole area up. 3M has these awesome sanding blocks. They actually are a really light block that it's kind of got a hook it material. Makes a nice little sanding block. You never want to sand with your fingers going forward like this because you'll get grooves, your fingers, because these blocks are soft. So you'll actually have groove marks where your fingers are. You don't ever want to do that. You always want to sand against the grain of your finger. So always this direction so you don't get those finger groove marks. But now I'm just trying to get rid of the other scratches. Guide coat will let me see all my 320 scratches. And uh, I'm smearing the guide coat in now into the 320 scratch. Because with 320, especially with metallics, uh, you will definitely see that in your paint job. So typically you'll want to go 600 and maybe like on silvers, 800 or even 1,000. If it's a metallic, I recommend at least 600 to 800, depending on what color it, it may be. If you get too fine, you really don't get a bite with your paint either. I wouldn't go over a thousand on anything. So you can see I'm sanding back and forth, never using my fingers to go forward. And basically, I'm just trying to get rid of all the 320 scratch. And if I do want to go over the edge, make sure you turn your hand. And what these are good for is all the edges, because it kind of, being soft enough, it lets you get into the grooves, like this small groove of this. By squeezing the sandpaper, it allows me to get into here. Now we're gonna try to get, well, not try, we're gonna get rid of that 400 scratch, turn it into a 600 scratch. So guide coat it again. Just repeat what you did. Just gonna blow this off now. So now that I have this area done in 600 and I don't see any pinholes or anything in my guide coat where I sanded enough, I'm going to tape off these edges um, so they remain really crisp and straight in this line again like I had 
What's nice is you sanded beyond where you needed to go. Just naturally you would because when you're sanding, the, it would sand beyond. So you wanna keep the tape back onto the smooth surface just a little bit. So you sand right up to the tape then. One layer is good enough for 320. And we'll do the same down here and keep that crease. So now we'll go and sand these areas the same way I did these with 320. 400 and 600. I use a little smaller block to get in there and I kind of wrap it up. So I've got a little bit, not as sharp of edges and I'll work this area here, allowing me to get both sides of that crease. When you're in a crease, you never want to go straight because you'll leave a line. It's amazing how quick that line will come in there. So you kind of want to always be moving up and away from it. See, like there, I just did it. But I got the block turned really sharp, just in that angle. But if, if you have it just even a little bit, you'll see a crease, so you'll wanna come across it in a bunch of different ways so you don't have that edge. And you'll see it in the next layer of guide coat if you do have one. So that's what's great about guide coat. It'll, it'll show you that edge. There's 320, we'll guide coat it and do it in 400. Again, not only going this way, never with your fingers. For anybody that does body work, is, uh, the painter either gets all the credit or, or he gets all the negative part of, of the paint job because they don't realize that the paint job is really what's underneath it. So if you do your job doing the body work, the painter's gonna get all the credit, but uh, I guess in the other way, it could be that he doesn't get the credit because your paint job's only as good as what you do here. So take your time, get it straight, uh, make sure your, all your lines are crisp, your gaps are good, and. Um, I can't say enough about the prep work time. Now after I have those two areas done, 600 both, I remove the tape. I just take the 600 and just go over it real lightly. Pretty well ready, we'll get it blown off, wiped off and tacked off and put some sealer on it, get it ready to paint.